I went aside. We are still in the Beatitudes. If you didn't hear Pastor Steve's message this weekend, I really want to encourage you to listen to it. It was so, so good. He taught on the scripture, uh, Matthew 5, 10, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And um, we're going to look at that today, but at a verse from the Old Testament that looks at this issue as well. And in it, David pours out his heart to God and says, many have come, this is um, Psalm 38, 19 and 20. Uh, many have come, become my enemies without cause. Those who hate me without reason are numerous. Those who repay my good with evil lodge accusations against me. Though I seek only to do what is good, Lord, do not forsake me. Do not be far from me, my God. Come quickly to me, my Lord and my Savior. I think you can hear David's torment in this. It's like he's saying, I'm doing everything as rightly and righteously as I know how to do it. And still people are against me. This doesn't seem fair. And it certainly isn't pleasant. I think that it's easy even now to imagine David going through that. But I think he did. He felt he had enemies around every corner and he didn't even live in a world with media because right now there's never been more ways to be mad and mean to each other quickly and in all kinds of places as we have right now. It's just so easy to talk, get our opinion out there and to speak badly about others and to have others speak badly about us. It's this society where it seems like everyone kind of feels persecuted by those who don't agree with their opinions. But I think it's important to remember that not being liked is not the same as being persecuted for righteousness sake. Even not being liked for righteousness sake is not the same as being persecuted. It doesn't make it pleasant, but it doesn't make it persecution. Um, if you stick your neck out at all, you're going to run into someone who doesn't like you. Uh, during the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge a few years ago, I wrote a blog post that went viral. And it was just about what it was like to be a family living with ALS. And it talked about um, the, the benefit of the Ice Bucket Challenge. I was, I was for it. And I watched the counter on my website go up, up, up as people began to find the article. And it was like first a thousand and then 10,000 and then a million and then 10 million and then 15 million. So many people read that article. And as you can imagine, so many people commented. And for some reason, because we were a family living with a really dreadful disease, I thought that they would be kind but many of them were not, most of them were, but many also were not. And they accused me of all kinds of things, like of getting rich off the ice bucket challenge, which couldn't have been further from the truth. I didn't make a dime off the ice bucket challenge. They accused me of, of not caring about the water crisis in California and of not caring about diseases that were much more prevalent than ALS and there's so many things and it was crazy. And I remember just wanting to put my head in the sand and never look out again because it really was my first um, time of moving. I had been so supported and loved by our church community and I had been raised in the church community and people who kind of believed on, in me and loved me and believed the best about me and about what I said. And when I first stuck my neck out into this world where not everyone believes like I do or knows me or loves me, I realized it's not pleasant out there. It's really not very kind out there. And I want to make it clear, you know, nobody threatened me or my community and nobody, you know, there weren't people in my driveway with pitchforks and torches or anything, but it felt really awful to feel like people were against me for an opinion that I felt was really right and was grounded in right thinking. But that is the time where I think I got most acquainted with the heart of God for people, for me, who comforts me in my affliction and my sadness, but also for people who disagree and people who fight and people who are not kind. I just remember what it felt like to, to, to realize these are, are exact the people that Jesus loves exactly as he loves the people in my church and in my pews next to me and be, me. These are his people too. These are people that he died to save. And it brought me closer to the heart of God being disliked. Um, Jesus said, you are a city set on a hill and you're good to know one if your light is hidden. 
And I was thinking about it this morning. What would make somebody hide their light? I mean, light's cool and we want it, we need it to see. So why would we hide a light? And I think it might be because we know that light draws a crowd. And if you've been around any length of time at all, you know that crowds are often unkind. In fact, right now, inside nearly every crowd, there's someone who's going to throw some rocks. And I think as followers of Jesus, we have to be willing to be a light and stick close to him and know that the attacks that come from, from any other direction, whether they're uncalled for or called for, the attacks that come from any other direction can, if we let them, bring us closer to his heart than we've ever been before, make us love more like him than we've ever loved before, and create in us a hunger for the kingdom of heaven like we've never experienced before. Wouldn't that be the greatest thing that we could ever do with persecution? So um, keep reading the Beatitudes, stay in it, figure out what is it, God, that you wanna to say to me through this as we finish up our study of the words of Jesus from Matthew 5.